Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and you are in part two of the second session, stitching out the whole cloth for a side quilt. Is that right? Sounds good. <laughs> so we are getting ready to stitch this out. In the last video, in the last episode, um, we used the Versailles pattern from Quiltable. Um, I'll link it below. Remember, Quiltable ASF 10 will get you 10% off, 10% additional, an additional 10% off your purchase. So make sure when you're shopping there, ASF 10, yay, 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 my affiliate code. Um, and thank you for Quiltable 1 for always supplying me with designs whenever I'm like, hey, I want to make this. Here you go. Um, and two, for passing those savings on to you guys. That's fabulous. Super excited. Super excited. Um, but we set that Versailles pattern up. I showed you how to set it up for your machine. Maybe you don't have the Infinity and you have a smaller throat and you needed those passes to be smaller. You set it up for yourself um, where you're able to do it. And then now we're taking it over to the machine. Um, before we do that, we're going to find the center of this fabric. So remember, we're using Connecting Threads fabric. This is Jam. Um, just one of their color wheel solids. I love their solids. They're some of my favorite that I use. Do I have a pen? All right, so you're almost gonna find me in the corner crying because I couldn't find any of my HQ iron off pencils. And I, I have like four packs of them. I don't, they're around here somewhere. But um, this is my favorite marking tool um, as of late, depending on what I'm doing. This is the HQ iron off pencil. Um, it will mark with a line, but then you hit it with an iron, it disappears. When these first came out, I tested them. I stuck them in the freezer. I scribbled hard and then ironed it off just to make sure everything was going to disappear and that I can say, oh, I like these. Um, I like them. The, the one drawback is you cannot get a sharp point. If you need a tiny, tiny dot and like, ooh, maybe not the best tool. Um, like when I'm um, doing half square triangles not going to use this because that line like when you do the line and so on the sides the lines would be too thick but um, when I quilt I use this a lot especially if you're starting free motion and you want to kind of draw the design out a little bit great because it's going to disappear so I'm marking the center I'm going to fold this in half and I went back and forth on how I should load this if I should load it salvages or load it on the edges um, I trim my trim my top well I trimmed this because this is a whole cloth um, I always trim my backing straight. My tops, you don't always have the ability, oops. You don't always have the ability to trim them perfectly straight um, because if you're trimming a top, you're cutting something off that you probably wanted, which is why it's there. Um, oh, I have my iPad out because I have to, I'm making a quilt. I'm still designing the quilting. That's why I have to get these all done so I can get that quilt loaded. So I'm just folding it in half and I'm gonna fold it in half again, right side out because now we have our center mark, our center point. And I'm just gonna mark this and I'll just kind of mark it on both sides. So now I have a dot right at the center. I didn't do it super heavy. So I, just enough where I'll be able to see it. Ha, huh, perfect. I mean, I could have just finger pressed that intersection too, whatever. So now I'm gonna load this up. I'm gonna move you over here so you can see how I load them up with the magnets. So I'm moving the batting out of the way because the batting goes last and I'm going to throw it over my bars, but you're not even going to be able to, uh, I'm not going to be able to leave it there because I'm going to move my bars in a second. What can you see? You're not going to be able to see me and that's fine. I'm grabbing my magnets. If you watch the, if you've watched the channel, you've seen me use these. These are the, um, so tight magnum magnets. Um, so they're, how big are they? Where's my cutting mat? Where's the ruler? They are, that's the wrong direction. They're four inches long. And they're super, oh, I just almost pinched myself. Um, they, they, they hold, they hold tight. Like I just said, I almost pinched myself. But they're small, so they're easier to get off than the magnets that um, some people use. I don't like the big, long strip. Uh, I've just, I've heard some horror stories. Uh, I have my backing loaded with zippers, so I've been using the zippers. I can't say enough great things. I love how flat this stays. Ugh, great. Um, I'm not worrying about marking my center in this case because I'm going to try to center it on my backing because it's only, only as big as it can go, right? <clears throat> if I was loading it with my zippers, you know, I'd pin it right in the center and I'd mark the center and everything, but 
since this is gonna, it's not floating because I'm gonna put it on the bar, but let's see. So here's my top and I'm just leaving it loose. I'm gonna move my batting like I just told you I had to. And put my ratchet down. I'm gonna make sure my leader is tight on this bar. I use, I also use so tights. Um, if I were buying today, I would get the so tights HD because they're also pretty strong. But um, I have these little ones out, so that's what I'm using. So these were just regular so tights. I use these at the end of my leaders. Oops. At the end of my leaders, you can see one down here maybe. Um, and it holds the leader on the bar, like all wrapped up. I'm making sure this is tight all the way down. And putting my other magnet on the other side. You couldn't see that. Sorry. Okay, so. I'll turn my leader and I want my I want my zipper right on the top. So now I have my zipper. I think I went one click too far. So I have my zipper here and what I why I like my zipper here is that now I have an edge that I can line everything up with. So I'm going to bring my fabric over and line the fabric up with the edge of the zipper. And now I know everything's in line because I have that straight edge. Now I have my, my uh, magnet. Can you see? I'm going to move you over like this a little bit because I want you to see what I'm doing. So it's lined up to the edge of the zipper. I put my magnet right here on the other side of those teeth because it also gives, me, gives it something to grip up against and gives me a visual of what's going on and where that magnet's going. So... Um, I have 10, this is only, uh, um, how big is this, 45, so I could probably use all 10, I probably won't, we're going to find out, so I'm going to make sure it's lined up, and pop my magnet on, pop, uh, jump over a few inches, magnet, and this is how fast I can load this using the zippers and the magnets. Did I put one, two, three, four, five? One, two, three, four, five. There we go. So now my magnets are on. I have one extra. He feels left out. I always like to grab my top and hang it over. If you've watched the burrito method, you know I always hang everything over my back bar. Not that it's gonna stay there very long, um, but I hang it over the back bar because it's gonna pull tension. It gives me extra tension when I roll this up. So now I can roll. And those magnets aren't going anywhere. Making sure everything lays nice and straight at the beginning. And I'm gonna roll, and I don't roll mine all the way up. I don't, I roll it until I have extra slack. So I have a good like four or five inches. I like that extra slack there because it's gonna um, it's gonna help me whenever I do my basting stitches. So now this just gets accordion folded over. And if you do this and you do the accordion fold and it's not working for you, maybe this is why. Um, this is another place you could just pop a magnet, one here, one here. And it'll hold that. I never thought about this. I just thought about this right now. One in the middle. And now it's going to hold the fabric on. So I'm going to have to put my batting. I'm going to lift this up. Lift the other side up. And I'm going to load my batting under my bars on the pole cradles. And now this is going to keep the fabric from falling off. Like things, things you think of when, when you're stitching. When you're stitching on camera. Ooh, I gotta take this call. Okay, it's been a very busy day so far. I'm getting lots of calls. Um, nothing to do with quilting. Alright, so lining up my my fabric or my batting. And I'm gonna start my quilt pretty close to the well, I guess I'm not gonna start it close to the edge because I centered it. But 
I'm going to get pretty close to that edge because it's um, 35 inches and I think I have 38 inches total, 30, something like that. I measured it. So um, it's going to get pretty close to these. So I just have to be aware of that. So when I base down my top edge, I'm going to get really close to my pins. Um, let's do my, my wool. And one side is fatter than the other, so make sure I pick the right side. And we're putting the thinner, the thinner batting, the thinner loft on the bottom. Some people do it the other way. Um, to me, that se I seem like, because you know, when you stitch the batting, or when you stitch, it pushes the batting down. And that's what make, gives it the kind of 3D, you know, puffy look. And if you put the thinner layer on top, then you, when you stitch, that thinner layer is being pressed down into the fatter layer. So I don't know. If it works for you, it works for you. That was fine. I'm gonna pop my arms down. And now I'm loaded using my, um, my magnets. So that's how I load that. It's, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna base down the top. So you have a video for this, how I base my top and everything. All of that's gonna be the same. So I'm gonna do my basing stitch, baste, um, baste the sides of my quilt and baste through the whole quilt. Cause I'm gonna, it, basically I'm basting it like it were a whole cloth, cause it is. And then I will see you here when all of that is done. All right, so here we are. Here's beautiful taco. And we're getting ready to load up our thread. So. The first thing, I've changed my needle because I went to the Superior Threads Toa Guide. I opened it, it's on my computer. Um, I will link it below if I can, if I remember. Um, and I went to the metallics column and it said, metallics, it's considered a 40 weight thread. You want a size 18 needle. Always do what, especially when you're working with specialty threads, always do what's recommended if you're nervous because that's gonna give you your best shot at being successful. So um, that was the first thing. It said to use a thread net, but I don't have a thread net and I don't wanna take it off of one of my other cones. So I'm not gonna be putting a thread net on, but if you have a thread net, and I'll probably be picking up some thread nets next week whenever I'm at Road to California. Um, the second, uh, the other thing it said, in our barber pole right here, we only want to go through one of the holes. So I'm going to pull my thread out. I'm not going to pull my thread out all the way, and I'm going to go through the bottom hole only whenever I do this. But I'm not going to pull the thread out all the way because I still don't want to thread the rest of it because I'm lazy. So metallic going straight up, and I'm going straight up into the barber pole that's directly above my above my cone. I will see if I can pop it in here. Popped into my thread guide, and now I'm going to tie it off. To that thread. So I'm kind of skipping the rest of the threading process because I can tie this off. And now I can just pull it through like always, being careful that it just doesn't get all wrapped up like it just did. I'm going to make sure that I can feel tension on it in the tension discs. I can. And then I'm going to pull it down. Um, now, a thing with metallic thread, it doesn't like a lot of tension. There's a ton of tension on this thread through these discs right now. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to change my tension, which is currently at 27. And I'm probably going to go down to like 15. I like that much better. And now I have my machine threaded with metallics. One barber pole, size 18 needle, that's what Superior says to do. Um, I do want to show you this too because um, I'm going to test my tension in a second, but I just oiled. I just cleaned and oiled my machine and this is how much stitching I had to do before that oil kind of ran itself out and I was getting a good stitch before again. So you can see right here, like I can scratch these stitches and they're coming up. And it's not because it wasn't in the tension disc. It's not because it wasn't, um, tension wasn't good. It's because I just oiled it and the oil gets on the thread, makes those threads a little bit slippery. And then this is why that happens. So anytime you oil, I always stitch off to the side some. I'm threading my needle. The other thing about testing this tension right now is gonna show me if I really like this color these colors together so you can see that so 
So the, um, oh, another thing, and I'll change the speed whenever I get there, but um, the Metallics thread does not like, like you can't go fast. It's, it's, I, finicky is the wrong word, but it is temperamental. How about that? Um, it's sparkly and beautiful to me. I don't know if it is to you, but I think the tension is going to need to come up some. And the answer is yes. Let me make sure I'm still in that disc. All right, so I'm turning my tension up. That looks better. All right, everyone, I don't know what I did, but whatever I did, I forgot to either hit record when I was setting the design up to place it, or I hit record and then the video got corrupted and deleted. I don't know, whatever, it wasn't there. So what you didn't see, I'm going to run here really quick in simulator. It's really easy, but I just want to make sure you see this. So I'm not even, I'm not using a mouse. I'm just using my touch screen on my computer, but I will tell you what buttons I'm going to hit. First step, we need to open our design. Um, I'm on my computer, so I am using, this is my simulate. Um, I am using the Pro Stitcher, uh, the current version of Pro Stitcher. So when I open the designs, you're going to notice they're all going to open to my crosshairs. So file design, so file design open. Here are the files that we set up. We actually set up in the last video the Versailles 30 files. But remember, I wanted to make it bigger, so I'm going to open the 35. So I'll start with uh, Versailles 35 group 1 and hit tap open. There it is. And this one's going to... Um, open centered on my crosshairs it's going to be perfect but i am um, now i'm going to hit i'm already in the file tab i'm going to hit design open and let's just get group two and you're going to notice they're going to open overlapped because the start point is going to open at my crosshairs that's how my settings are so i'm going to do the same thing i'm already in the file tab i'm going to hit design open and pick that um versailles 35 group three you'll see it turns black when you hit it i'm going to hit open again it's gonna open up my crosshairs. So now everything's open, and I'm just gonna pretend that I opened these on my Pro Stitcher. Well, what we don't know, I'm gonna zoom out and move my screen over. Let's say I open these and my crosshairs weren't centered. I marked the center of my fabric. This is how I can't believe I um, forgot to do this because I mean, I made a point to mark the center of my fabric. I'm gonna hit simulate and move my crosshairs. And we're gonna put my my needle right here because now my crosshairs and my needle, remember crosshairs represent your needle, is on that center mark of my, fab my fabric that I made, that I marked at the beginning of this video. Now we need to get everything centered onto my crosshairs, onto that center mark. So I'm gonna tap select over in our select tools because um, I was on simulate and I can pick any design I want. I have one selected already. We have the um, the row three. So I'm going to go up to my modify tab. And because we set this up and we saved it and we like centered everything to origin and saved it, um, I can go modify, reposition in my ribbon, and over in my sidebar, I'm going to hit zero. And it's going to place that. I'm going to hit the bottom house refresh so we can see what's going on. So it's going to place it where it's supposed to be according to where we digitized it. So this is how um, Modify Zero works. If you say, if you set up this whole cloth and before you save it, move the whole thing to origin in Pro Stitcher Designer, save as an HQV file, you can use this uh, zero button. So now I'm gonna select one of the other designs, whatever one it came up, this is group two or row two, and I'm gonna, we're already in modify at the top, reposition in the ribbon, zero's over on the right, and I'm gonna tap zero again. And now that row is set up perfect, and now I'm going to pick my last piece, and I'm gonna hit zero one more time, refresh bottom house, and now everything is set up, and this would be lined up perfectly on the point on my machine because I put my laser light right at that dot or my needle. 
So that's what I did, that's what you missed, and then now the this part is gonna be stitching out row one. One other thing before um, I start stitching this, I forgot, I wanna go into my settings, I wanna go to my OptiStitch. I have my OptiStitch acceleration 40, speed 75. Because we're using metallic, I'm gonna turn it down to 60. Just to go a little bit slower than normal, because I don't want it to go too fast and break that thread. I'm not in a super big hurry, although I just told you let's raise the clock kind of thing, but I'd rather not break thread than, um, than raise the clock. So now I am going to make sure all my settings are correct. I only have the center um, design one selected and I will hit run. So I'm sure you noticed the bobble in the video. Um, I have a thread break right here. And it's something that happens sometimes when I use metallic thread. And if I tilt you up to look at the top of my machine, don't look at the screen because it's so dirty. Um, but if you look up here, I put two pieces of batting here and I also moved my cone to the back spool. So you'll see the thread is running through both. The cone is now on the back spool holder going up, coming through both, and I stuck two pieces of batting in between these holders because the thread broke because the um, thread had bounced out of this, popped out of my thread guide, and it was coming directly from the spool. So the spool was twisting and getting caught, and it just got too tight and snapped. Um, so this will help that thread from popping out. Metallics are the only ones that I have to worry about that sometimes because of the way it's twisted and because it's metal, because there's metal twisted on there, it, um, it has a tendency to kind of pinball around in there. So this will help with that. So pass one is done. I'm gonna advance a quilt. We'll be right back. All right, so I just hit drop and then I realized what I did. And if you look at my screen, I only drag and dropped, drug, drag and dropped, whatever. I just have that one design selected. I forgot to select everything on my screen. So I moved everything, or I didn't move anything except for that centerpiece. And we can see that the centerpiece is now moved and everything else stayed the same. So it's not lined up. But remember, we can reposition zero. So I have my center point there and I can still get my machine to it. So I'm gonna move my machine to that center point. And then on the screen, um, I'm gonna leave the design selected. Where's my center point? And I'm going to select my bottom piece, modify, reposition zero. And I'm gonna select the top piece that's hidden back there and reposition zero. That's not the top piece, there we are. And now that reposition zero has saved the day because everything is lined back up. So now I can select the bottom. I am gonna move my machine all the way towards me to make sure that this is actually gonna fit. Oh my gosh, like three quarter inch to spare. I'm so good sometimes. Um, the right and lefts are gonna be fine. There's nothing that needs to line up except for that point and that point and they are gonna be stitched out together. So I don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna stitch this and I'll put you back so you can watch. So I advanced, 
here we are. I'm going to hit refresh so we can see a big. Um, if I line something up, there's the top of this kind of circle. I'm lined up. And again, the nice thing about this design is that if things aren't lined up exactly perfect, how I'm doing it with my rows, because I'm able to stitch this all the way out, I don't have anything to line up. Everything has a buffer around it. I'll show you more when it's done, but I'm gonna stitch out this section and then we're done. All right, everyone, so we are done. And by we, I am done. This is quilt number two in the last two days. Um, whole cloth, honestly, it did not take that long to stitch out. I started it at 11.58. It is now, I think, 1.58. But let me tell you, I took the dogs for a walk. Um, I got distracted many a times. Um, yeah, so it two hours, and that was with other things happening. Um, but seriously, look at this baby. I wish you can, you can't see the sparkle that the metallic threads gives, but it's so just like shimmy, 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 shimmy. Um, I'll post pictures here. Um, and the back looks just as fabulous as the front. So I have a double whole cloth that if I thought about it, I could put something I really liked on the back so I could flip it around. But I don't know why you would want to flip it around and not see the beautiful metallic threads. So um, this is the Versailles pattern from Quiltable. Remember, ASF 10 will get you 10%, an additional 10% off your purchase. Um, we took it into Pro Stitcher Designer, did our own layout, changed and picked our rows, made it exactly how we wanted to stitch it out. I brought it into Pro Stitcher, loaded it up, um, zippers on back, the quick zip system from the Quilting Connection in Wisconsin. If you want some zippers, call them up. They invented them. Um, so I loaded the zippers, uh, the backing on with the zippers. The top I loaded on with the sew tight magnets. Again, ASF 10 if you want to pick up some magnets. 15% off there. Um, fabric is uh, connecting threads and it is jam. I could just rub my hands on this all day. It feels so good. Um, Fabric is Jam by Connecting Threads, just at one of their color wheel solids. And Thread is Metallics by Superior, color the Violet and 11. Um, two layers of batting. Uh, I was going to say 80-20 because that's what I usually use, but it's not. It's poly with the layer of wool that I found in a box. So there you have it. Versailles done. Now off to quilt number three. We'll see you all in the next video. And at the end of the day, it's just quilting. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and follow me on social media, Adam So Fun, on Facebook and Instagram. Bye, everyone.